院长你就先啊、uh, share 你的 screen。对啊，他他说他等他们的会员呢。Now、uh, I have made Dr. Yu. Now Dr. Chi Hong Lin as a presenter. Let him try with yeah, this. And then,、yeah. Okay, we'll start the program.、Uh, good evening and welcome you all to this one of the、um, most、uh, the important meeting of this、uh, Journal of Handbag Surgery.、Uh, about meeting all those、uh, legends and masters of、uh, the Changun Memorial Hospital.、Uh, this topic is very uh, really uh, important for all those listeners who are here. Um, thanks,、uh, Professor Yu Tianling, for this wonderful opportunity. I think he has agreed to、um, uh, make this event a great、uh, uh, for all our viewers and、uh, to learn and to have the experience and to make a break and、uh, to have a great beginning uh, about uh, toe reconstructions and bone and joint reconstruction.、Um, so uh, I thank uh, Dr. Professor、uh, Chi Hong Ling,、um, Professor Chen Hong Ling, Dr. Yu Tianling, and uh, to the. Uh, 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 thanks for uh, uh, making this, and uh, uh, Professor Chang Hun,、uh, Chang Shen Hu.、Um, thank you all for、uh, making this、uh, evening a great evening for all of our viewers. With this brief introduction,、uh, I would like to、um, request Dr. Professor Chi Hung Lin、uh, to talk about、uh, his first talk. Professor Chi Hung, please go ahead.、Um, it's a great pleasure to have a webinar conference between India and Taiwan. And I'm I'm great honor to be invited to talk about the thumb reconstruction. Thumb is a a little bit unique in the digit.、Uh, in the position is 60 to 80 degrees to metacarpal arch posterior configuration, so it can have a unique motion of a circumduction. And it provide a optional strength for both prehensile pinch grasp, and it comprise. About half the total hand.、Uh, sorry to interrupt you. Sorry to interrupt you. Please share your screen now. The criteria for successful thumb reconstruction will depend on the mechanical requisites,、uh, including correct. Professor Ling Ling, sorry to interrupt you.、Uh, just share your screen. We could not see the screen. Okay, see the screen. <laughs> No, please share the、no. screen now.、Mm. Oh, excuse me. Great. Please start from the first slide,、uh, Professor. That would be、uh, wonderful. So、can you see the screen now?、Okay. Perfect. Please go ahead. Thank you. Okay.、Uh, I'm going to talk about the thumb reconstruction.、Uh, thumb is a unique in digit,、uh, including the position, and is a, a function of the circumduction. It can provide an optional strength of for both prehensile pinch and grasp. The criteria for some successful thumb reconstruction will depends on the mechanical requisite, including the correct length, strategic positions. Stability and for your the physiological requisite will require the movement sensibility, absence of pain and integration. The thumb replantation is the best method for restoring thumb loss. It is always the absolute absolute indication for replantation in any salvageable thumb amputation, such as this above chandelier amputation. We can do the replantation to provide the best function. And we do every effort to do any in spare part replantation, such as this pub replantation. And these two patient has a, a pub amputation. We will do our effort to do the replantation for a better function. And usually in this、uh, degrabi amputation,、uh, we not only for the、uh, replantation, we also have to perform the tendon transfer or nerve、no、grafting or transfer to provide that. A、uh, functional reconstruction and sensation.、Uh, a lot of mutilated hand reconstruction. We have our purpose, including the basic hand. Basic hand is, is a minimum requirement for a hand. The functional lens is is necessary to lead the ordinary life. The thumb should be distal to the IP joint by five to ten millimeter. The digital will be distal to the PIP joint for ten millimeter. As a summary defect, we can separate to the distal third, middle third, and proximal third.、Uh, first of all, we go. We are going to talk about distal third. 
on in in case that this is some um, defect as uh, the functional lens is adequate for the functional lens uh, a lot of local fat available for the resurfacing and also this stem fat can be used for the coverage of the or the uh, amputated, amputated stem and and in in besides we have uh, many free fat available such as senior fat can for the the, the senior fat can can Sinopher can provide us the resurfacing and this a uh, pulp transfer and the composite nail that the trans transfer and uh, also we can perform a, a great total run for a, a defect coverage in the distal sum defect and such as this uh, uh distal sum amputation and, and after repair is the necrotic but and the patient will transfer to to us and after, after two weeks. In this patient, after discussion with the patient, we perform a this the uh, uh, the great toe uh, transfer. So this a this a this the great toe transfer. And after the transfer, you can see that the patient with very similar appearance with a very little uh, donor side mobility uh, uh, using a this the great toe transfer to provide to provide uh, cosmetic and a functional restoration. And then we talk about the middle third defect and. There were some non microvascular technique, including the, the franchisation and the osteo osteoplasty and detraction method can, can use a not microsurgical technique to provide a, a functional reconstruction. Uh, but uh, and we are talking about a toe transfer. Uh, this patient has a bilateral hand with crush amputation. And this is a right hand, and this is a dead hand. And you can see that the both hand, both, both hand has a solar digital uh, amputated. And after that a discussion with the patient, we perform because that uh, right, uh, right thumb, the thumb is a little bit short, and then the left. So we perform a, a great toe transfer to the right hand. After a toe, toe transfer to, to the right hand, we can compare. Uh, the right hand and left hand, we, we can see that after a toe transfer, that the transferred hand will provide a, a better function than the non toe transfer hand. And great toe transfer is usually is our preferred method for the, the sample construction. And the other method would be three great toe transfer, great toe transfer uh, developed by by the by uh, Professor Sir Wei. And also the great toe lump method for assembly construction. And usually we, we like to do the total great toe transfer. And this patient after total great toe transfer is a good function. And a train great toe developed by Professor Wei is that uh, to decrease the size of the great toe to have a similar appearance to the to the sum. Uh, however, we compare the train great toe, total great toe are really long. We can see the range of motion and the pinch power, the twin gray toe will infill function compared to the total gray toe and, and very long method. And why is the twin gray toe has an inferior result? And because of the, there will be some mobility from the, the trimming. The a trim the gray toe, the IP joint range of motion will be less because the IP joint will be violated. And the suture skin, some will be, is, ischemia and the necrotic and some of those so they will so decide they will substitute so scarring and the tender addition and then we will talk about a post post muscle defect and in a in a process some defect in the mutilation when there is a comparable lens between the thumb and the other fingers and we can perform at one stage uh, a toe and a multiple toe, toe transfer to provide a, a one stage total reconstruction in a, in a hand. And I'm going to just, uh, um, mention about some factor we influence the choice for some reconstruction, include, in, including the, the patient's job and patient's uh, uh, traumatized situation. Uh, also, practice method can, can be used uh, with or without toe transfer to provide a possible hand reconstruction, such as this uh, uh, aged patient 
uh, we can perform an osteoplastic surgery. This and as a, this osteoplastic surgery can be a, as a opposer, and the patient can have a basic hand function here. Besides, it can allow in the patient to consider the option of a toe transfer. Now, osteoplastic surgery. Then, after osteoplastic surgery, then we can discuss with a patient whether to do toe to some transfer or not. As for these two patients, after osteoplastic surgery, so surgery, the patient can have a uh, a greater transfer, then can we can provide a better function than in compared to the only osteoplastic surgery. As they said, a uh, mutilated hand, uh, we perform a uh, iliac flip to, to for the osteoplastic surgery, then followed by a, a, a two toe transfer, in two, including the total great toe to the thumb and the vascular second toe joint transfer to the middle finger. After this two toe transfer, the patient can have a precise triple pinch and, and hand function. And this is osteoplastic surgery that result. You can see uh, after the osteoplastic surgery, a lot of patients can have any achieve a basic hand. And when the patient has a toe transfer, the hand function can be promoted to have a more fun functional restoration. And, and this is uh, uh, our uh, cases uh, series. Uh, only some involve 30 and 93 percent of patients can achieve a basic hand function. Our overall okay, result, the basic hand function in this series is about 75 percent. And the other I choice, with with for example, in the 1997, he mentioned that. Functional total amputation of the first metacarpal. The, the first choice is the uh, poisonization. When, uh, when poisonization is poor impossible, an osteoparcus sum can be considered. And, but poisonization is best often for the, the traumatic reconstruction since the developed the micro vascular uh, technique. Uh, in the post traumatic index finger poisonization, as for this, okay. this patient, and uh, they were circumferential soft tissue uh, loss, and uh, the sum rate was lost. So in this kind of post-traumatic uh, index so finger, a fresh link uh, again. they would. So I should exit at the end of we, this talk. We may need, require a bone fixation and sh shortening uh, with some rotation, and they will require a extreme tendon transfer, intrinsic muscle tra uh, defect will require that a, ten a ten ten tendon transfer to to a, to a fault. Uh, like, the transfer the index with some extensive uh, function. And besides, because that, uh, the senior muscle was lost so in the uh, traumatized sum, that's why the patient may, may require a colonoplasty to have a, to, to, to have a better uh, function. And besides, because the vascular bad damage, so it, in this such a this patient, we, we require a microvascular artery bend and nerve repair. And in such a this uh, the sum rate amputation in the in the base, near the base basal joint area we can we have to perform uh, we, we can mm, perform a, a in this finger polarization we are accompanied by a tendon transfer and after the tendon transfer the patient can have a possible hand function as for the sum rate MP joint level amputation. Uh, in this kind of a, the patient, they will they present a metacarpal defect involved, the MP joint destruction. And besides, as we can see that the senior muscle uh, was lost, and that especially that the APB was traumatized in all, all these patients. In this uh, traumatized radio hand, we, we have to perform some uh, uh, circumduction, reconstruction, including the opponent plasty, and besides, we have to release the contraction in the secondary cases, and we have to put, and because of uh, this MP joint was was lost, so the, that's why the basal joint was lost. That's uh, or we we may perform a base, uh, basal joint also plasty or vascular joint transfer, and such as this patient, now this uh, um, uh, MP joint amputation. We can perform. We can at um, the crush injury. We can perform a, a second toe transfer. Second toe transfer. Have, second toe has a 
external digital logos and tensor digital webs can be used for the uh, the attendant transfer to the to the sum after the third, uh, after the transfer the patient can have a uh, good angle separation angle circumduction and a capangji about uh, the eight in this patient and this and this patient the same is as a question with the side with the sum uh, like the sum mmb joint level uh, was destroyed in this patient we we have to perform a uh, but Se uh, second toe vascular joint transfer and they will take with the and uh, also like the e EPL repair to the ED EDB and the APB will do the, the stamp will repair to the EDB to provide the, the, the opposition function or APB function restoration after surgery angle of separation and angle of conduction and capangi score you can uh, can uh, achieve uh, you know, functional risk Acceptable result and the vascular joint transfer the, with the open passes as we mentioned it can we can perform a, a component separation method to uh, to to do this kind of recon, reconstruction uh, this patient has a, a, a punch injury on the uh, on a pop and uh, also like the, the, the mp joint so we can we can put we can use a single second toe with the component separation and for the pop the, the second toe, the pub for the pub change for the pub resurfacing, and the, the plantar the foot, uh, the, the plantar side foot to the senior skin defect, and also the, do, the do, dorsal foot the, the do, to a dorsal hand defect. The MP joint can be used to reconstruct the MP joint in, in defect and to do the component separation to a functional restoration. And the, the second toe, MP. MT joint can afford the same MP joint reconstruction uh, because uh, the, uh, on the EDB can be repaired to APB to, to allow a required opposition restoration in a one stage reconstruction. But uh, when, when in the patient, the more proximal amputation on a basal joint and CB, basal joint area, we the patient may require a CMC arthroplasty and operant plastic to, to have a functional restoration. This and after the uh, first stage and the, we have the pedicle going fed every either crest and as the osteoplastic surgery, this uh, osteopathy, the either crest. And then up, after the patient have this uh, this a uh, uh, bone dense reconstruction in the, the second stage that we can we, we can perform a toe transfer uh, based on uh, this and this uh, a bone lengthening procedure, and besides, we 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 do a um uh also plastic on on the on this basal joint, and after this kind of the surgery, and then doing this kind of the surgery after this surgery, we can see the patient kind of go up good opposition and and second duction function, and this patient is a burn uh, electric in injury. With, with a contracture of the hand, and the, the, this is not a basic hand because the thumb is a bit lost, uh, a bit a bit short. So you can you know, there's an extension and there's a flex fraction. The patient can have a basic hand function, and we can perform a, a, a toe transfer for this kind of patient. And we use the endoscopic method to harvest the, the sternum. This is the sternum we use the endoscopic method method to have it there's a student and it is uh there's a great great toll transfer to to that to this stem and after this this is a surgical, surgical procedure and after the the, the surgery on um, uh, five months later the patient can have good uh opposable hand hand function and this patient is a uh, crush injury he, uh, he does all the extensors, so the patient needs an MP, MP joint drop. He cannot extend the MP joint. So he, before the toe transfer, we have to perform uh, some the contraction procedure, not only for the extensor, but also for the contractured waste space. So we perform a um, rectus femoris function muscle for, for, like, for extension or the, or the M, for the, the finger MP joint, and also the, the skin pedal for the, the waste space uh creation after the surgery uh, after first uh the function muscle transfer 
and the patient can receive a great toe transfer. And after also the, 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 the opponent plus after surgery, this of after surgery, you can see that there's a rectal femoris or extension or M or a uh, MP joint and the great great toe with a with a opponent plus for a circumduction and the patient have a good pinch and for for the thumb. And the summary the thumb reconstruction, uh, we can use the toe transfer to provide a prehensile or possible radial component for the basic hand functional restoration. Thanks for your attention. Um, thank you, Professor uh, Lin. That was very, <clears throat> you know, fantastic and a great talk. It was amazing. All those pictures are really amazing. Um, we kept, you know, enjoying and mesmerizing with all the results. Uh, words cannot be expressed about the work and the amount of, uh, you know, reconstructive options you have been uh, doing there. Uh, we have a uh, Dr. Professor uh, Samir Kumta from India. Uh, he's uh, unable to join us through a video, but he's there with us audio. Um, he would like to uh, uh, comment on this, and then he would like to uh, pass on the talk to the next speaker. Uh, Professor uh, Dr. Um, uh, Samir Kumta. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Terence, and uh, thank you, Dr. Lin, for an absolutely wonderful uh, talk. Uh, you really uh, showed the entire gamut of uh, possibilities uh, that can be uh, available to patients uh, who need a toe to hand transfer right from just a simple toe transfer to the complex ones with additional flaps nerve transfers and whatnot um, i had the pleasure of assisting you in 1999 when i visited changang for uh, two weeks uh, okay, I assisted you. you for a double toe transfer. I don't think you'll remember, but uh, I, you know, the the easy nonchalance with which you dissected both the toes, I it looked as though you were just dissecting a lymph node. So I I was really uh, amazed uh, at your skill. So uh, uh, lovely uh, uh, talk, and I think we'll uh, we'll uh, we have not received any questions, but we'll ask the panelists all the questions at the end of the talk. Uh, so thank you very much, Dr. Lin. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, Professor Samir Kumta, uh, the next speaker. Yeah, uh, it's it's my uh, pleasure to introduce the next speaker, Dr. Cheng Hung Ling, who also is a product of the Changung uh, uh, unit in uh, Taiwan. And he uh, happens to be a, a, a student of uh, Dr. Uh, Lin himself. And uh, he has been associated with Changung Hospital and he also trained in the University of Pittsburgh and then at Johns Hopkins in Baltimore. Uh, he is involved in the uh, composite allotransplantation uh, of, uh, performed at uh, uh, Changung. And he was the one who performed the first uh, bilateral forearm allotransplantation in Taiwan in a quadruple amputee, followed by another case of above elbow transplantation. Both cases are successful. And uh, Dr. Lin is going to talk to us on pulp transfers. So I hand over the mic to Dr. Lin. Please go ahead with your presentation. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much for your kind of introduction. And thank you, Dr. Jerome, for the for organization. Today, I would like to speak the fingertip reconstruction with fetal pulp transfer. The fingertip is a highly specialized and unique structure just distal to the distal interphalangeal joint crease. <clears throat> the fingertip injury is the most common hand injury and we can encounter due to the recreational or occupational causes. This uh, flow chart for the fingertip injury treatment uh, from Dr. Kevin Jones' uh, paper in PIS 2008. It's a very clear illustrate uh, which uh, step we should follow in the, the fingertip defect. Today, but today I just want to focus on the fingertip defect with the vital structure exposure. So we may need to use the soft tissue coverage. <clears throat> Uh, before we consider fingertip reconstruction, there is two specific considerations we should take in mind. The first is the pub, soft tissue defect. The second is the nail bed injury, which kind of nail 
we we can store and we we need to be corrected. So for the purpose of reconstruction of the pub defect, we we know the pub actually is composed of the guabra skin. So it can provide stable padding, precise sensation. And when we do the fingertip reconstruction, it's good for us to follow Dr. Gilly's uh, principle, replace like with like. And the functional requirement is uh, to restore the sensibility, stability, and durability. So we can see sometimes even we can use a going paper for the very good finger reconstruction. But when we rotate the finger fabric, you can see the midline is here. Then you can see the midline can can shift to radio side, on our side, and easy. So it cannot provide a stable uh, padding. Regarding the feet toe to finger tip neurovascular fabric reconstruction, we can go back to 1979. At that time, Dr. Bunky and Rose first uh, proposed at the red one stage transfer of free neurovascular fair from the toe part to fingertip. And it can restore a well padding and sensitive fingertip. It provides a several advantages compared to the rotation island fab, such as a better two point discrimination, acceptable donor defect, and no cortical real orientation needed, and it can also minimize uh, tension on the nerve. And it can also provide the guava skin is a, a little bit uh, dense skin compared to the other face, uh, facial cutaneous fab, so it can provide great contour remodeling. Now in this case, after initially, this case have the soft tissue defect, then but initially we contract with the cross finger fiber in the other hospital. When he transferred to my service, it showed the pub insufficiency. Then we I do the pub transfer. Initially a little bit bizarre for this uh, appearance, but three months later it looks okay for the aesthetic outcome. We also published one paper regarding the functional assessment of the reconstructive fingertip after free toe pub transfer in PIS. In that article, we, we find that it's not only restore the sensibility, but we also can restore the pinch power of the reconstructive finger because the re pinch power depends on the digit dense, near complex pub stability and adequate. And could be restored after reconstruction. So for this case, if after we reconstruct the pub defect, the nail goes accordingly. <clears throat> so the pub reconstruction, we should not only take care about the soft tissue reconstruction. We also need to take care about the nail because the nail, if the nail we put too much tension on the nail, we have. Uh, result in the whitening deformity. So uh, there are several important issues we should follow. We can we need to have the adequate bony support and the flap usually need to have the one two millimeter beyond the nail bed and it should be the tension free closure and nail as I mentioned the nail cannot be poor over the bone tip. But sometimes we still encounter the hook nail. So for the hook nail, we should we should prevent the retract the nail bed. The retract nail bed we all result from the pub insufficiency, and also have the lack of the bone knee structure. Sometimes we can find the bone bone knee structure we can replace by the rubber skin. The guava skin actually is a little bit dense compared to the fascial cutaneous fiber, so it still have the support, uh, support uh, uh, role for the nail. Like this case, after we re release the 
structure, we can find a soft tissue defect. For this kind of soft tissue defect, I do the pulp transfer for the fingertip reconstruction. After four months, you can see the hook nail was corrected and the nail can go a frag accordingly. And the donor side, I usually close the donor side primary. So in some cases, I need to have the, uh, a little bit larger fray from the toe. I may use uh, the delayed wound closure. But for the small defect like this, I may use uh, just uh, use a coarse finger fab. But the coarse finger fab, the, the fab come from the little finger also is a rubber skin. So the result actually is fine for the patient. The final, I would just want to discuss uh, several toe pop fab variant. But uh, because of time limit, today I just want to focus on the first wave fab. When we encounter the scenario, we need to have a skirt tip to control the edges and fingertip. So what we can do? This is the Professor Chioni's case. So in, in the conventional or the traditional reconstruction uh, method, we can harvest uh, two toe pop fat from uh, bilateral food and do the very good outcome. But, uh, but for this case, uh, we need to make uh, two set of vascular anastomosis. So in, in some cases, we consider to use a first web web for the reconstructing the edges and fingertip injury. In this case, I just from the back the Web. Then after two weeks, I can divide <laughs> the fab. Dr. Senyong Wu have already published a beautiful paper in PIS 1999. In that article, have already made the five classification of the first web space. In case, uh, in the like classification, you can find. Each classification have already mentioned in the clinical application. So uh, the important thing for the first wave fiber harvest is we should include the lateral skin of the greater, medial skin of the second toe, and in according to the soft tissue defect, we should also uh, harvest the, the dorsal and the plantar skin. The web space actually is very specific geometry. You can have thing is purpose was just for the finger abduction and adduction. So for some case, especially for the hand web space defect, we can also need to use the first web fiber to follow, just follow the replace like with like principle. But some people we should take in mind for because the, the toe fiber can is a little bit shorter. So we may encounter the tissue insufficiency. And the fab volume, if we need to have uh, larger fab volume, we may need to include the fat of the web. And the donor side always uh, is a consideration because a primary closure may be to only tolerate for the second wave harvest, but for the first wave, it usually uh, actually complained by the patient. And if we put a skin graft, the painful hyperkeratosis always uh, is a problem. Like this case, when we encounter this kind of extensive web soft tissue defect, we can harvest the first web web. And five months later, it was okay for the abduction and adduction. But for the donor side, like the previous uh, article published by Dr. Pinan in Journal of Hand Surgery, you mentioned you, you can see the donor side usually and have the synthetic appearance. 
So for the donor side mobility, we may we may use the local paper such as the rotation or the keystone paper apply for the web creation. So in my hand now, I just use the donor side winkle to use the dose of advancement fab. Like this case, use a dose advancement fab for the good donor side coverage. And this is another case because the substitute defect is not so big, so we can just use a rotation fab for the defect coverage. It's much better for the appearance of the syntactic or the put just put a skin graft to cause a hyperkeratosis. So in summary, the, the goal of the fingertip reconstruction is to restore the sensibility, stability, and durability of the injury digit. We should follow Sir Gillis' uh, principle, replace life with style. And then we, we should also take in mind to minimize the donor side mobility. And finally, adequate fingertip reconstruction may preserve the digit length, restore the nail compress and pop stability, and finally can achieve the optimal functional and aesthetic outcome. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Chen Hong, for a wonderful and incredible talk. Replace tissues with replace. That's the motto and the goal of any treatment. Thank you very much. Uh, Professor Samit. Uh, yes, thank you, uh, Dr. Lin. Uh, it was wonderful. Uh, uh, one very important uh, issue you address was the correction of hook nail. Uh, we always uh, believe that hook nails are caused by uh, an unsupported nail bed. However, you have shown how uh, even pulp deficiency can cause hook nail and uh, how you have been able to correct it uh, using a, a toe pulp transfer. Uh, you also showed excellent uh, reconstruction of uh, finger web spaces using uh, uh, toe web uh, transfers and the results were excellent. And uh, the use of local rotation flaps and uh, advancement flaps from the dorsum of the foot to uh, fill up the defect uh, created by removal of the web, that is also very interesting because uh, as you pointed out, we have always had this issue of hyperkeratosis if we put uh, skin grafts there. So this is a very nice and useful innovation. So thank you for a lovely and very informative talk. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Amit. Uh, we have uh, Dr. Chao Cheli, uh, one of the finest and uh, a great microsurgeon in China. Thanks for joining us, uh, Dr. Charlie. Uh, and it is a privilege to have you. Uh, please go ahead, Dr. Charlie. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Uh, Graham, for your invitation. It's my great honor to join in this, uh, this great uh, webinar uh, taught by four masters on uh, thumb and uh, finger reconstruction from Chang'an Memorial Hospital. And it's my great honor to introduce the next speaker, Dr. Chongzheng Xu. Uh, Dr. Xu is a plastic surgeon at the uh, uh, Department of Plastic and Reconstructive Surgery, Linko Medical Center, Chang'an Memorial Hospital. Uh, he completed a plastic residency and became an attending staff and at trauma division of the same department. In 2009, he took plastic surgery fellowship at the Mayo Clinic. Roger uh, Minnesota. He is currently an associate professor. His clinical practice is focused on extremity reconstruction, limb salvage, uh, congenital hand and foot deformity reconstruction, general hand surgery. Uh, thank you, Dr. Xu. Please uh, go ahead with your uh, talks. Thanks. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Chong Zhenxu. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Chen, uh, for a kind of in introduction and uh, it's uh, also my pleasure to be uh, invited in the meeting uh, today i'm going to share my experience about about okay, sorry yeah sorry sorry is it still mute Oh, you can yeah. make the full screen. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. And, 
Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, sorry, sorry, sorry. We can sorry. see your slides also, no, no worries. Okay. Make it so, big, make it big I and I can go on, right? Yeah, please right? Please okay, okay, okay. I'm sorry. Um, no problem. Today, I'm going to share my experience about the medial femoral condyle uh, for um, pharyngeal bone and the medical bone reconstruction. Couple bone reconstruction is not included in my in my talk. Uh, non union and the bone defect of the of the of the hand are challenging in hand surgery because because of uh, diminished uh, vascularity and uh, extensive scarring after injury and uh, prior surgery. The reconstruction goes to be achieved early bone healing and to prevent and to pre and to prevent uh, permanent stiffness. Long vascular bone graft are easy to be harvested uh, and inset, but it takes the risk of unpredictable bone union and the resorption rate. Vascular bone uh, provides superior structural support with the vital bone stock, increase the vascularity of the uh, of the wound bed and the accelerated bone union. It it changes the bone graft creeping substitution to simple fracture union. Uh, so the process should be independent from wound bed condition. Different from endograft inclusion of uh, priorstim uh, provides strong osteogenesis potential, also provide a good wound bed for skin graft in case of difficult or wound closure. Since the original description by Dr. Sakai, the medial frame counter has gained increasing interest as a source of the of small vascular bone flap because uh, uh, high cancers uh, to cortical bone ratio, high osteogenic potential, easy to customize for small defect, minimal donor cell mobility. Uh, that's all compared with compared with the fibra bone, and uh, it has a very reliable vascular ana anatomy. There are two vessels surprise the flap, descending genital artery from a uh, superior femoral artery and the superior medial genital artery orig originated from papillary artery. According to the study from Mayo Clinic, uh, descender, a descending genital artery is a dominant vessel. About 77% of flap use it, and the pedicle length is much longer than uh, superior medial artery. According to the bone fed pattern, the flap design and the inset method are different. We define type 1 bone defect as stable bone structure with a partial critical bone loss. In this situation, critical periosteal flap or periosteal critical cancerous flap is indicated. And the uh, flap fixation with a suture only, maybe you can use PDS or nylon suture. Hardware fixation is not needed. Type 2 means uh, unstable segmental pharyngeal or medical bone defect, periosteal critical cancer flap or periosteal flap with bone allograft is indicated not only to uh, feel the defect, but also provide skeletal mechanical support. Rigid hardware is necessary. The third type is multiple uh, pharyngeal and uh, medical pore defect with or without overlying soft tissue defect. If there are neighboring medical pore bone defect with uh, dorsal hand uh, soft tissue insufficiency, chimeric osteocutaneous flap will provide skin flap and two bone graft from the single donor site. Uh, if if there are separated bone defect on different dig digit. Maybe we can divide the flap pedicle to have two free bone flap. We present uh, some patients based on the bone defect condition. This is a 40 years old, old female with a left fifth metacarpal head in chondroma with uh, MP joint movement pain. The X ray shows an uh, axial like cortical bone near the articular surface. Here is the marker of the uh, dorsal vein, vein and the incision line. Tumor curatage was done after putting, uh, putting the extensor tendon to radial side. 
uh, free medial femoral condyle periosteal cortical cancer flap was put into the bone defect uh, cavity and uh, revascularized with a uh, digital artery and the dorsal vein. The patient's x ray revealed good bone regeneration and one month follow up and kept stationary until 10 months after the surgery. Uh, this is a young male with a right thumb in uh, IP joint pathological fracture due to the giant cell tumor. The patient is a judo athlete and willing to join a national competition three months later. So he came to my clinic and requested surgery to get a quick bone union and maintain uh, IP joint range of motion. Curate Curated the tumor and uh, fixed the fracture side with a tension band wire and uh, fixed the flap with uh, suture only. Six months uh, after surgery, the x ray shows a uh, bone union. Uh, the, the, IP, the IP active range of motion was a 40 degree, no pain. He joined the competition and win fifth, fifth place. The X-ray at the at the month follow up, no joint degeneration. Uh, then in then introduce the uh, manager management of the segmental on unstable pharyngeal bone defect. Uh, this is a young lady with right thumb replantation with IP joint missing, bone defect about uh, one point five centimeter. We harvested a piece of a cortical cancer bone, fixed with uh, two K wires. The X-ray uh, take, taken at uh, five weeks after surgery shows bone win, uh, bone union, so the K wire will remove at at, the, at that time. At a six months follow up, the patient had a, a very strong pinch power. Sometimes uh, the Patient has multiple defect. Uh, this is a 21 years old male suffer from right hand crush injury with hand compartment syndrome, right thumb plasma pharynx and the middle finger distal pharynx community fracture. The MP joint of the thumb was involved, but the patient refused the suggestion about a vascular joint transfer. So we apply vascular bone to fill the defect. Double Periosteal cortical cancer flap from single donor side was harvested. Uh, the pedicle was divided. The flap with longer pedicle was used for some, uh, some bone defect reconstruction. Uh, both flap were fixed with uh, two K wires for each. After flap revascularization with uh, vein graft, full thickness skin graft was applied on periosteum on the flap. Uh, here are immediate and uh, two months after surgery X-ray. Uh, there are adequate os ossification of both flap with preserved bone length. KY will remove at uh, at that time. One year from up also found a uh, good bone healing and a stronger graft bone quality. The key pinch power uh, with index was uh, three five. Uh, 3.5 kilogram. Uh, key pinch power with middle finger was 2 kilogram. The grip power was uh, 80, 28 kilogram. Sometimes the patient has composite tissue defect. Chimeric flap design should be con con considered. Uh, this is a, a 35 years male has who has a uh, right hand second and third medical bone defect and the dorsal hand soft tissue insufficiency. Regarding uh, the overlying skin perfusion of the medial femoral condyle, there are two possible uh, sources. One is a distal cutaneous branch of descending genital artery, but it's more common to see uh, an artery branch from saphenous artery, which has longer pedicle to increase the freedom of flap inset. The descending genital artery angel some territory is located uh, at the medial knee, about 70 square centimeters. The territory of the artery branch is over medial 
aspect of the distal thigh and the proximal leg, uh, the territory is much is larger. Usually, the flap the flap uh, fat is is too thick to insert on the on the finger. So that's why I like to put a full thickness skin graft on the parostim of the flap uh, in case of difficulty of wound closure. Chimeric osteoconus flap, uh, femoral condyle flap was used to fill the defect with single pellicle revascularization. Uh, the flap was fixed with a suture only. The bone healing time was about two months. Uh, the plate was removed six months after bone reconstruction. This is actually taken one year post-operatively. Uh, two and a half years far up the after the active range of motion of the MP joint is very good. And uh, this is another international patient with a uh, breast in, in injury on the hand, uh, who re he received several times of surgery. He came to my clinic and uh, just re request a wider first web space and uh, correct more more straight for uh, finger access only uh, via the X-ray. So you you can see there's a bone there's no bone support on the frontal base, and the soft tissue can uh, contracture in the first web space. I use chimeric uh, medial femoral condyle to feel the bone defect and uh, cross the wound after uh, first web space release. A piece of uh, Periosteal flap was prepared uh, for the difficulty of wound closure. Usually, the flap donor side uh, could be closed primary if the flap width is smaller than five centimeter. The bone flap was fixed with a KY only because of the high osteogenesis capacity of the medial frame condyle flap. Pin fixation and sprinting is enough uh, for the non-movement area bone reconstruction. Uh, sometimes the descending genital artery do not uh, share the conjoined pellicle with the subvenous artery. The instance, the instance uh, is about 80%. If your design is chimeric flip, it will become uh, two flips. But we can use intra flip anastomosis technique to conjoin the two flip. Uh, just choose a bone flip or skin flip with a larger pellicle diameter as the main trunk. Uh, then it's easier to find a branch on the on on the main trunk. Uh, usually, the branch uh, will go to the muscle, so uh, the branch could be used uh, to hook up with the flap, uh, the flap pedicle, uh, to hook up the pedicle of the other flap. Finally, I introduced the case uh, with a periosteal flap only. The last patient was a five-year girl with a left thumb hypoplasia, both type 3B. The most common procedure uh, for this, for the deformity is a precisation. But the, the parents requested uh, to preserve the thumb due to the acceptable size and the shape. Why not to use cortical cancer bone flap? Because uh, in pediatric patient, to harvest the medial femoral condyle must take the risk of the gross plate injury of the femoral bone. Recent, recently, Dr. Innocenti introduced the technique to avoid facet injury during the flap harvest. Uh, the surgeon used a distal pin to mark the distal margin of the flap and to make sure it's not involved the gross plate, then set the second pin to mark the proximal margin of the flap. Uh, so we try to decrease the flap donor side mobility. So just harvest the periosteal flap only. Uh, the periosteal flap was wrapped around with uh, allograft, allograft bone strut. Uh, KY transfixation was used to maintain the thumb metacarpal height. The periosteal flap was wrapped with uh, uh, wrapped the native metacarpal bone stump. The, the immediate uh, post 
up X-ray reveal the location of the aloe graft. The X-ray uh, will remove five weeks after surgery. Then the X-ray taken at uh, five months is follow up show good bone healing and uh, graft hypertrophy. She received uh, up arthroplasty and the sound MP journal viral pressed arthroplasty at one year after bone recon reconstruction. Five months later, the re the reconstructed thumb represent a better joint stability, uh, opposition function, and the pinch power to hold the wallet. Uh, the x ray revealed good bone ossification. This study is also done at a Mayo Clinic. They found that there uh, were many intra perfor perforated vessel. The density was the highest in the distal posterior quadrant of the medial femoral condyle. It means if we need a small bone flap only, uh, the area should be the first choice, but it's near the medial cardiac ligament. So uh, the surgeon should be very careful not to damage the important the ligament. Uh, here, uh, here is a ICG scan of the cortical cancers medial femoral condyle flap. Uh, the vessel is descending during carotid. You can see the cancer's bone is well perfused, uh, and uh, the light is even stronger than the overlying periosteum. Per Regarding the dorsal mobility, this paper is from Dr. Higgins. He studied 15, 15 patients who on the uh, when the medial femoral condyle flap procedure, then use CT uh, to measure the bone repair, reparative condition. The average bone harvesting volume was uh, 16 cubic centimeter. Uh, so you can see uh, the 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 correlation of the volume of re of resected bone and the, the re of the reparative bone formation. Uh, you, uh, actually, the reparative bone formation is, is minimal, just between uh, four to six millimeter. And uh, the correlation just hint, uh, maybe more, more resected bone uh, will have a, a um, lower repar reparative bone formation. Uh, so far, there are uh, three cases reported about the iatrogenic uh, fracture after medial femoral condyle uh, flap harvesting. Uh, this is uh, one of the cases. The bone flap dimension is uh, six by one by one centimeter. Uh, three weeks after surgery uh, for clavicle non unit management, the patient suffered a femoral bone fracture, uh, so received the uh, internal fixation. Uh, six months uh, follow up, the bone is union, but the patient still feel pain. Um, so we suggest uh, not to hurt it too much cancer's bone graft from the donor side and uh, try to use the so, uh, to create the osteotomy guiding line to prevent uh, ignore fracture line extension and uh, try not to touch the supracondyle area, which is the junction between the cortical bone and the cancerous bone, which may 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 weak the mechanical separation. And 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 you can see the regen the regeneration of descending joint cartilage uh, via the MRI study. So uh, the conclusion is uh, the free medial from femoral condyle are uh, provided reliable and predictable method for pharyngeal and medical bone reconstruction. It also provides a one stage solution uh, for multiple uh, bone defect along with the soft tissue defect. Uh, compared with the conventional bone graft, uh, it is suitable uh, for distal bone reconstruction with the skin graft wound closure. It's my talk. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Changun. You you have uh, 
you have talked uh, very uh, deeply and detailed uh, about the medial femoral condyle flap uh, on the treatment on the treatment of the uh, bone defect and uh, composite tissue defect in hand. Um, I think for the small composite uh, composite tissue defect in in hand and finger is very difficult to treat. And you have showed very, uh, very nice, very, uh, very good uh, cases in uh, different types of, of uh, the uh, such uh, such uh, tissue defects, and uh, talked about the anatomy and uh, and the donocyte morbidity and uh, uh, some uh, difficult situations. Uh, such as the, the variance uh, of the uh, of the um, the vessels, uh, and I, I think I we really have learned a lot from you, your talk. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Chow and Professor Chang, for this wonderful and the uh, great fascinating talk on this. Uh, now I take a privilege and honor to introduce uh, Professor Yutun Lin, uh, who was the man behind this entire program. Uh, thanks for coordinating and organizing this in a short notice, Professor Yuteling. A few words about this. People go to US and take a break at London and go. And most of the reconstructed surgeons, they take a break at Taiwan and they visit uh, the Changun Memorial Hospital and work and post Professor uh, Yuteling. Such a wonderful um, person and such a great uh, uh, and admirable microvascular surgeon. Uh, he has been uh, trained in Changun Memorial Hospital, trained in Mayo, um, and being the secretary, uh, president of the Taiwan Han University, and also the president and the present chairman of the uh, department of PRS. It's really a great honor and privilege to have him. Um, thank you for joining us, and uh, please go ahead with your talk, Professor Yuteling. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Florence, yeah. for the kind introduction. Tonight, I would like to uh, share with you my experience about the vascular PIP joint transfer. And to make it function, to make it uh, work, I think it's not just about the joint itself. So uh, we did a systematic review in the past uh, with my uh, residents, and actually we found out that uh, from through this systematic review, you can notice that friction of the of the uh, transfer joint. Nearly, it's always it's not a problem, but uh, about the extension, that could be a problem. So the study actually was uh, got a similar uh, uh, conclusion with uh, Hiena and Berger that they they they, they uh, make the comment on the uh, vascular PIP joint transfer in 2008 that the most striking problem in the toe joint transfer is about the extension neck. So that would be a, a extensive deficit for about 30 degrees. So in in their papers, actually, you they they summarize uh, five possible reasons to cause the uh, uh, extensive lack of the of the PIP joint after the transfer. The first two probably is more difficult to correct. That uh, that would be more related to the uh, native. Total anatomy is that uh, that could be difficult for us to correct that. But in the following three uh, reasons, including the insufficient tension of the extensor tendon or the too long uh, in the collective joint graft bowstringing, these could be some technical problems that we should be able to take care of. But all these uh, poss possible etiology are they are they the real reason? that we could not uh, have a good extension of the toe joint after we did the transfer. I think we, uh, uh, to starting on the lens of the, of, of the transfer toe joint, we did a, a study uh, with uh, Dr. Chong Zheng Xi when he was uh, uh, doing his uh, uh, research in the biomechanical lab in the Mayo Clinic. And, the paper actually was uh, published in 2017. In that study, actually, uh, we used the cadaver for the for the study, and we resected the uh, finger PIP joint for two centimeter. 
and replace the, the defect with starting from 2.5 centimeter of toe joint graft and then shortening that every uh, half millimeter to have the uh, uh, study. And finally, we found out that uh, uh, the longer segment we, uh, we, sec uh, we interpose into the, into the uh, finger joint defect, actually the arc of motion will be less. And on the contrary, the extensor leg will be less if we put in into put in a shorter graph. But of course, this is uh, just from a cadaveric study to prove that a longer segment of graph is is not good for a, a joint transfer. But uh, according to the uh, excursion of the tendon, we still have to think about that. Uh, not uh, definitely, it's not shorter the better but we have to concern about the excursion of the tendon then the length between the equal to uh, five millimeter shorter from from the uh, finger defect actually I do not have a adequate answer yet but most of the time I would uh, put in a, a two millimeter shorter joint graft to the finger defect so another uh, problem that we we follow uh, during these years that uh, during our, our observation of the uh, finger uh, toe joint after the transfer, we found out that there are two type of uh, uh, toe shape, toe uh, proximal phalangeal toe shape uh, in the in our cases. One is uh, on the left is the so-called uh, bola facing profile, and the other is a neutral face facing profile. So you can see the the joints faces actually is kind of different, and we are we just curious uh, will this affect our results? So we did the measurement to get the the angle of. Uh, the theta is uh, as an uh, inclination of the toe PIP joint. So um, this is a busy side and we go to the conclusion of this study. And through the study, actually we found out there was uh, no difference according to the age or pre-op range of motion of the toe PIP joint or even the post-op range of the PIP joint. It is not related to the Articular inclination of the toe. So, in these two studies, that uh, one is about the length of the toe, and then the other is uh, some natural uh, shape appearance of the of the of the toe PIP. They they doesn't uh, in in this study actually it doesn't show to have uh, any difference with the with the inclination. So what is the problem about uh, uh, why we still cannot have a good extension of the PIP joint after the transfer? So we did a, a observational study during our dissection of uh, when we do the uh, toe joint transfer. And also I have Dr. Shi in, in, in Mayo Clinic and at that time, we, we did a, a, a observation study, and this was published in 2013. That um, the we can see the uh, this uh, illustration of the uh, finger and toe extensor mechanism. You can see most of the uh, anatomy likely to share the same uh, uh, in the extensor mechanism, but. During our dissection, uh, we collected the cases uh, till uh, January this year. We have 86 uh, vascular joint transfer. And also I have 12 toes that is from the cadaveric dissections. And from the studies, actually, we found out that uh, in these 98 toes, 93 of these eight, uh, 98 toes, actually, we call it type one. What is uh, type one? You can see the uh, these are the little bands. Um, here would be the PIP joint. 
and you barely can see the uh, central strip crossing over the PIP joint to insert it on the middle phalangeal base. So this is a video that during our uh, vascular joint transfer, you can see that in this area is the raw surfaces and you can see the little bands, but there's no obvious tendon fibers on the dorsum of the uh, middle phalangeal base. So this is representing about 95% of the cases. And in some of our cases, we do found that uh, they will have some fibers crossing over the PIP joint and likely to share the similar anatomy uh, of the extensor mechanism of the uh, of the toe and the finger. And these we nominate they are so-called type two of toe extensor mechanism that they represent that they, they could represent in probably less than five percent of the cases. And what's uh, important of the of these two type of toe for the type one when we pulling on the lumbical and pull the extrinsic tendon at the same time, it can extend better. But if we loosening the uh, intrinsic uh, tightening, it seems likely the extension of the PIB joint will be less. So this actually will demonstrate when the intrinsic and the extrinsic tendon be pulling, the PIB joint can be extended better than when we relax the lumbical tendon. And type two is different when we're just pulling on the extrinsic tendon, that, that is the EDR and EDP tendon. And when we're pulling on that, the PIB joint has been extended quite well. So from this study, that uh, this anatomic observation, then we notice there were basically more than 95% of the cases, there will be no uh, central strip on the uh, middle phalangeal base. So when we just uh, repair the uh, extensor tendons, uh, distal to distal and proximal to proximal as being demonstrated by Dr. Boucher in the past, that could be a problem. So we have to try to uh, do a simultaneous extensor reconstruction uh, during our joint, pro joint transfer, we have published uh, some articles in the past. And for the, uh, at the beginning, we have to dissect the uh, recipient finger first, because we have to know what had been, what, what was left uh, before the joint transfer, such as the, uh, sorry. So uh, through the through the picture, actually, we found out they have different uh, type of the uh, toe joint. If the extensor actually lost and the lumbical had lost, we will do uh, so-called centralization. But in the second condition is that the if the central strip is the, the only problem, the little pain is good, intrinsic is good, then we can do the uh, central strip reconstruction with that. But when everything was gone, all the uh, tissue was destructed. For the type one toe, we will do the uh, central strip reconstruction. But for the type two toe, then we can just go ahead and do the directly EDL to EDC repair. For the central strip reconstruction, actually we I modified uh, uh, two type of uh, surgery. In the past, I do the modified stacks. I have to pass the FBS to the dorsum to inter interweaving to the uh, central tendon. Nowadays, I just uh, fix the lateral bands to the middle bench of the uh, toe joint, then weave the proximal tendon to the central tendon. So this is a demonstration of the test technique. We Here we are drilling on the uh, middle bands of the PIP joint. And we use the parallel circuit wire for the for the bone fixation. And after that, we use the four porting. Now I'm shooting across the uh, lateral bands and perosteum of the bone of the of the tendon. 
and then passing through the same drill hole of the uh, circuit wire, and then passing from bola to the dorsum through another side, and the little bend on the other side. So after that, we, we fix uh, our join with uh, the circuit wire. Mentioned that. And uh, after the fixation of the proximal planes, we check the alignment. And we repair the uh, paracetamol and the extensor tendon at the middle angle level. And then now I'm tidying down the for protein, just now we just have anchoring suture of the data band to the to the uh, middle angle base, and then at the proximal we just use the puffer top interweaving of that. So after the surgery, we will have the patient at the static spring, and then uh, after three weeks of immobilization, we will have the patient to remove the spring every one to two hours for the active motion. And after six weeks after the surgery, we make sure that the tendon and the bone union is better. And then we will have the patient to have the nice sprinting. And usually we just ask the patient to put on that for six months. It's an example of the uh, test technique that uh, you can see the joint destruction and deviated and poor range of motion before the surgery. So this is our inset suturing the tendon to the bone and in the weave the, the tendon and donor side was fixed with the joint a bone graft from the finger resected finger so this is for four months after the surgery the range of motion has been quite good after the rehabilitation so from 2008 to 2019 we have uh 58 cases but uh there are only 48 cases we found or more than, sorry, for we found for more than six months. Most of are young, and we use the second toe as, uh, 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 for the PIP joint donor sign. So in in this series, actually, they got uh, three cases with immediate failure that the vessel's problem that we cannot correct. And uh, the follow-up was uh, 34 months, and there were 22 cases, still need some secondary revision. But after all, that uh, the range of motion of the transfer joint actually could reach around 60 degree in the active range of motion, and that would be around 80% of the, more than 80% of our, our uh, toe joint in the native. And this 60 degrees is actually, if, if, if we use the, the study from human in 1990s that uh, the defining the functional range of motion of PIGP joint would be around 60 degrees. So we, it, it could, through this uh, toe joint transfer, we can get more than 80, 90% of the, of, the, of the motion of the native toe and, and the function. So for the cases we followed for more than two years, actually there were 19 joints and the uh, average follow-up was 55 months. And you can see the extensor leg uh, before the surgery is about six degrees and about in, in 55 months, actually is the, the extensor leg did not decrease through the, through the years. The friction is uh, slightly better and the active motion was, was quite acceptable. And this is the case that we, in my series that will be the longest follow for more than 10, 11 years. And uh, in, that was done in the index finger, deviated and poor range of motion. And also can see that even the middle finger cannot flex well before the surgery because of the quadrigia effect. So after the surgery, you can compare the, the picture in 2010 and 2019 that uh, the range of motion actually doesn't have too much difference uh, during these uh, nine, 10 years. So my conclusion is that uh, when we try to transfer the joint that we, we got to have uh, individualized and custom 
customize the need of the of the toe joint, especially at the extensor mechanism, and trying to uh, reconstruct the central slip at the same time. And if you can get a, a very compliant patient, I think through these techniques, you can get a, a pretty acceptable and good result. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Sir Yutulin, for great um, and amazing and incredible work. Uh, really amazed to see this uh, uh, results. Um, it was time that uh, we were thinking of PAP joint arthroplasty or a replacement. And then uh, all those PAP joint transfer could really do a great magic uh, in getting uh, back the function of uh, the PAP joint. And especially the concerns you have also mentioned about extensor lag and a uh, great increase in the um, uh, flexion uh, in the post-operative period. Uh, we have a lot of questions uh, uh, to the masters here. Uh, considering the time, we will take one or two questions uh, and then um, we can go ahead with the discussion. Uh, the question uh, to uh, Professor uh, Yutu Lin from the audience. The audience are like uh, really amazed by your work. We have a lot of questions uh, from worldwide, from uh, uh, Latin America to uh, to the West. Uh, they they are asking a simple question. Uh, Professor Yutu Lin, would you prefer a joint replacement or a vascularized joint transfer? It's a simple question to all the uh all the uh, advantages and disadvantages i think that uh basically you, we have to think about the indication for the joint replacement that uh, i think from the uh, companies that you, they will suggest it uh, the indication probably is best for the for the elder patient for the um uh, osteoarthritis cases or rheumatoid cases i think it probably would be the best candidate for the joint replacement surgery. And for the our young active post-traumatic cases, I think the, the the indication for the for that kind of arthroplasty probably is not as good. The result will be not as good. And especially for the uh, long-term outcome. That uh, we we noticed that uh, joint replacement could have some complication, and at least I know from one paper that they have already mentioned probably the survival of uh, of the replacement joint maybe in average eight to nine years, and for the uh, for the vascular joint actually it's um, if you do it uh, without any circulation compromise at the beginning that. Uh, I believe all these joints could survive for a long time, just as our, our experience in our toe transfers, that we, we have much more experience in our toe transfer and, and in the series that uh, the joints actually did not really degenerate during the years. So I believe that uh, in this component transfer, we just transfer the joint. I think we, we still be, can uh, provide the patient uh, a much long lasting result than the joint replacement so far. But of course that uh, the improvement in the technology and uh, we have uh, even better or, or even uh, updating in the, a new arthroplasty, a new joint available on the market then probably before that, I, I believe I will keep on using the vascular toe joint for the for the uh, a good candidate. But uh, when there's a, a, a good uh, and available uh, uh, joint that is available on market, uh, I, I believe I will turn, I will shift it to to the to the joint replacement. Uh, it's much easier <laughs> and and shorter Thank you, the Professor time. Uh, Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we have Dr. Professor Samit Kumta here. Uh, he needs to uh, comment on this. Please go ahead. Uh, I, I think Dr. Uh, Yutelin's uh, talk was wonderful. Uh, I learned a lot of uh, you know, indications for uh, joint transfers and uh, uh, methods to improve, his method to improve the to, to joint extension, uh, which is normally very difficult. His method is also uh, very useful and worth uh, replicating. Uh, 
So uh, I think thank you, Dr. Lee. And um, Dr. Terence, if you allow me, uh, I'd just like to make a few comments. Please go ahead, Sudhir. So, yeah, so it's nine I'd o'clock. Just to give you a uh, perspective of the Indian uh, experience with uh, to, 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 to hand transfers. So we do have a long history of uh, total hand transfer in the late 80s and early 90s. We had Dr. Venkat Swami and Professor Balakrishnan in Chennai. And um, uh, we had uh, Dr. Raji in Delhi. A uh, few of us in the 90s went uh, either to Changung or uh, like me. I went to uh, O'Brien to train with uh, Morrison and uh, O'Brien. So when I came back, um, I learned personally from uh, Morrison. So I did practice uh, quite a bit of photo and transfers. And um, uh, then the two joint and total transfers came much later. And a uh, few of us do have experience in that as well. Uh, recently, um, uh, a colleague and close friend, Dr. Nete in Nasik, uh, performed a very uh, challenging bilateral, uh, uh, you know, young patient with bilateral hand crush in the machine, uh, and all five uh, fingers in both hands were lost. So, he performed three uh, ALT flap followed by a uh, big toe and double second, uh, second and third toe transfers on both hands. Uh, one after the other over the course of the uh, of four days and uh, uh, both limbs are doing well and he has recently presented this in the World Microsurgery Forum. So we do have a long history of uh, go to eye transfer. But what I find is that uh, uh, patient's willingness to undergo this is um, yeah, it's very difficult to convince patients. Uh, like in the far east, where patients are not accepting of any loss in their fingers, even the slightest loss, even of pulp or a part of a finger, they will run the plastic surgeon and want to have it reconstructed uh, for social reasons. However, in our country, I think patients are very accepting of loss. One of the commonest questions uh, they ask us is, is this really necessary? Can I not do without it? And uh, another common question that is asked to us is, uh, uh, can you, is it, does it have to be mine too? Can you not get somebody else's thumb and put it on? So, but uh, the few that are willing to undergo the procedure, they are all uh, extremely happy with the result. So the only way to keep on doing more is to have a body of patients, uh, long-term follow-up, whom you can call and uh, show and use them to talk to your uh, patients and convince them with by showing the results that yes, this is what you can expect to get and then uh, that is easier to convince the patients to undergo the surgery. So that, that's what I wanted to say, uh, Dr. Terence, uh, and anything else is difficult to ask because I'm on a uh, phone without video. So uh, it's difficult to ask any questions, but if you have any questions for the panelists, I think you can go ahead. Sure. Thank you, Professor. I think you made a very good, uh, you know, narrative of Indian society. Uh, Dr. Kumta, uh, to be on the record, he was the past president of the Indian Society of the Reconstruct Microsurgery, and he's doing um, a lot of great and fine uh, microsurgery in our country. Thanks, Dr. Kumta, for joining us. We'll keep you uh, updated. Please stay tuned. Yes, thank you. Um, we have a, a one question from uh, Dr. Chow Chanli, and then probably we'll have uh, uh, the final quick uh, closing remarks. Uh, Professor, I mean, Dr. Chow Charlie, please go ahead. The question. Yeah, yeah. I have. Uh, thank you. I, I have a question for uh, uh, Professor Chu uh, Hongling about the thumb reconstruction. What's your comments on uh, other choices like uh, the second toe trans uh, transplant, uh, transplant, and the wrap around uh, combined with a uh, iliac bone graft? Or the wrapper round combined with a uh, PIP joint from second toe. Thank you. So. 
And thank you, Dr. Chao, for your question. As for the, the toll transfer, um, second toll uh, cannot provide a, a sizable uh, opposer for for opposition between the, the, the near thumb and the fingers. That's why second toll usually will not be our choice for this kind of uh, the transfer. Uh, wrong. Wrong, I will require uh, adequate bony structure for the rare run. In case there is a bony bone length not enough, it may not be good for us to use a rare run. Rare run is just for resurfacing and procedure, not a, a replacement. And that's why, in case there is a, a segmental, uh, uh, I am mean, there composite bone and soft tissue defect. We will prefer to like a great toll transfer rather than a rare run. And as for for the iliac crest and or or some some twist main method, and usually we will not do this kind of procedure regularly in our places. Sometimes we may do that, but regularly we will not do the do this kind of the twist the toll transfer. Um, because uh, um, as for uh, the functional the strength and uh, appearance and okay, one new one unit uh, toll transfer, the toll transfer will provide a more reliable result and because we can transfer a, a mobile joint and a, a sensate the, uh, some um, sense a pop tissue uh, for for the uh, near some reconstruction. That's why uh, the iliac crest uh, twist the uh, toe transfer usually we not our choice for this kind of reconstruction. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, I also have a question for uh, for Doctor Xu. Uh, what uh, what's your indication for a vascularized uh, bone flap uh, for a very small size bone defect in in hand? Will you choose a vascularized bone uh, flap if the soft tissue is, is good? Only uh, only a very small size or bone defect need to be reconstructed. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Chen, uh, for the for the question. Um, if the bone defect is very small and uh, uh, the wound bed is very good, I think uh, I will discuss with the patient. Uh, you can choose a conventional bone graft or vascular bone graft, and uh, I will explain the and uh, I will explain the prong and. Uh, and the cons, and uh, uh, just just allow the patient to choose to choose that uh, to choose the option. Uh, but if I check the uh, finger or hand condition, uh, the tissue is a severe scarring. I was I would strongly suggest just use a vascular bone only. Uh, so uh, regarding your question, if the soft tissue quality is good and the uh, Bone different is small. Maybe I will. Maybe I will recommend, recommend the conventional bone graft only. Except the patient uh, need a very aggressive, very aggressive surgery. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, one more question for uh, Doctor uh, Chen Hongling, and. Uh, 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 when uh, we uh, think about the donor site morbidity, uh, do you think it, it, it is a uh, reasonable or is a good a good option to use the first web space as the donor site uh, for for the flap transplantation? Because it's it's quite rare in, in my in my uh, department uh, to choose that the first web space as as the donor site. Thank you. Sure. <laughs> Thank you very much for your uh, interesting question. Actually, before I find a way to deal with the, the donor side wound closure, 
before I I find a solution, I never use uh, the first web for uh, for the reconstruction. But I after I I I think I can use the uh, either the dose of rotation paper or the advancement paper for the donor psychology using the cadaver study. After that, I have uh, the confidence uh, to use the first wave, especially in some traumatized and we still, in a very, very rare scenario, we still have the chance to use the first wave paper for the web reconstruction. As I mentioned, the web space have the specific geometry. So that means uh, it, if we use the conventional free fab, we are you sometimes you will too bulky for the patient have the finger A B duction or A D duction and always have the problem in the A D duction because it's too bulkiness. And so that's the reason I prefer use uh, first wave fab. And uh, after one year follow up for that, uh, I now I have the uh, four case uh, use uh, uh, this kind of donor side wound culture. The patient actually the scar is acceptable. Some patient e e even can have the sleeper. So I think it's okay for for us to use a first web for the uh, specific scenario. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Chow, and the. Um, for their uh, wonderful uh, questions and the interesting talk. Uh, you know, a great uh, uh, event which was begin uh, has to end in a greater way. Um, thank you um, for all the masters who have been uh, spending the night with us uh, with the, their uh, you know, incredible presentation. You know, now uh, we have uh, this Journal of Hand Microsurgery has an initiative of uh, uh, virtual education seminar, especially at this time, COVID time. Um, we have a worldwide uh, audience uh, who has they who always come as, uh, to us with uh, you know open minded and then they learn a lot of things uh, especially uh, this sort of topic will definitely uh, be a change paradigm change in the mental horizon of uh, reconstructive microsurgery and they come and they learn and then they go and then this uh, meeting is not going to end because you have made those audience a great beginning again so with this uh, small uh, you know uh, final words I'll ask all those uh, panelists uh, to uh, make a final uh, quick closing remarks for 30 seconds because the audience, uh, uh, they just want to know what next and what will be the future and what do you want to say about the two transfers and reconstruct microsurgery. Uh, the audience can be varied uh, to the specialists, to the consultants, to, for the fellows uh, can be graduates. Um, so just quick uh, closing remarks for 30 seconds. Uh, we'll start with uh, uh, Professor Chi Hung Lin, the first speaker. Thanks. Um, it's a great um, opportunity to have a collaboration between uh, India and and Taiwan. Uh, we hope we can continue our this kind of a conference between us. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Ling. Uh, Doctor uh, Professor Chen Hung Ling. Okay. Uh, Thank you very much for your wonderful organization. It's a good opportunity to know each other. Uh, we, I hope in the future we have can have a strong cooperation between India and Taiwan. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Professor Chang Chen Hu. And actually, we learn much uh, from the journal of uh, from of 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 the idiom, and uh, I always appreciate the the innovation and idea from your people. I would like to uh, to to learn much from your country. So I look forward to uh, the similar combined meeting uh, in the in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor uh, Professor uh, Lin. 
Yeah, thank you, Terence, for this uh, good opportunity for us to present these four amazing topics to all, all the microsurgeons. I believe this is uh, the, 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 the talks that we mentioned today, definitely is not the, the finalized or the, 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 uh, uh, the end of the microsurgery. I, I mean that uh, uh, definitely they got a lot of uh, rooms for the improvement and we keep on working on that. And uh, I believe that uh, 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 everyone could have a, a, a good uh, uh, experience and uh, can share through your platform. I think this is the most important part. And uh, we, we can share the knowledge together. Uh, thank you for this chance. And uh, we hope we can have uh, another meeting in the near future. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Thank you, Prof. Uh, Dr. Chow, it's only your final words. Okay, uh, thank, thank you, Dr. Jim, so much for your invitation. Uh, I, I feel very glad. It's my great honor to learn from the, the four masters from the best uh, team in the world. I learned a lot. I uh, feel I'm glad to to uh, join together with uh, the, my mentors and my uh, good friends. I am lo uh, looking forward to to learn from them in the future and, and looking forward to the next webinar. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, as Professor Yutuling said, uh, it's amazing if you could share all those knowledge to the generations because that is more important. The sharing knowledge is always a power. Um, so with this uh, a great note, I think I should thank all of you, all the panelists, moderators who have been with us this evening and made this event a great event of this year. Uh, thank you one and all. Uh, wish you a uh, safe and be healthy at this juncture. Um, God bless. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>